At the round earth imagined corners, a John Dunn piece in our playlist entitled Metaphysical Poets. We have done various pieces by John Dunn. We have seen him to be a thorough romantic. We have seen him to be someone who is in love with the discoveries of his age. And we have also seen him as a spiritual being in the holy sonnets that we have discussed. This piece is also spiritual in nature. And it actually questions, I would say, or comments upon the fact that perhaps this philosophy that we are resurrected is not really to be believed in, or perhaps there is a better philosophy that we can believe in than believe in resurrection. And he tries to put these two thoughts in front of us. One, that uh, a religious philosophy suggests that we shall be resurrected once we are dead and we meet our maker and our sins are going to be forgiven. And on the other hand, he feels that perhaps there is another way of looking at it. So let's discuss this piece. At the round earth, imagined corners by John Dunn. As we discuss this piece, we shall come face to face with this idea that should we live for a judgment day, for a day when we are going to meet our maker and therefore we only base our expectations of the result of our life on this particular day or all judgments, all action, all results are in the here and the now, are in what we are doing today, what we are doing in the present. This is a dichotomy that this particular piece explores. John Dunn says, at the round earth, imagine corners, blow your trumpets, angels, and arise, arise from death. You numberless infinities of souls, and to your scattered bodies go. John Dunn is imagining that it is actually the day of resurrection, where all those who are dead are today going to be brought again to life, and in that sense pardoned by the Almighty. In the first line he says, at the round earth's imagined corners. Now this is the time when... Uh, Christopher Columbus, like I keep saying in John Dunn videos, has discovered new lands, has made his journeys around the world. And this discussion that the earth is round is happening in the context in which John Dunn is writing his poetry. This is not to say that we had just discovered that the earth is round and not flat. We had known, known it for quite a few centuries by then. The Greeks had already discovered it uh, in the millennia before. So, here, he's just saying that uh, we say the four corners of the world, but because the world is a sphere, there is actually no corner. So therefore, he says that at the round earth's imagined corners, in all the four directions that we imagine, in all the four corners, or basically all around, he's telling the angels, you can blow your trumpets because it's the day to day when resurrection of the people who are dead is going to take place. And then he tells those who are dead to arise, that you must rise today. and you are numberless infinities. You are so many of you are there that the number is going towards infinity. It's a countless number. And you must arise and you must meet your scattered bodies. So you will become one with your body today once again and you shall be resurrected. So he's imagining that this is the day of resurrection. The angels are blowing their trumpets in all corners of the world. Imagine corners because the earth is a sphere and all the souls are today going to become whole with their bodies again. He goes on to say, All whom the flood did, and fire shall overthrow, all whom war, dearth, age, abuse, tyrannies, despair, law, chance hath slain, and you whose eyes shall behold God and never taste death's woe. Now he's telling us who are all who comprise this numberless infinity. Who are these people who are going to be resurrected from the dead? He says that you are the people who basically died in the flood or you died in a fire or war killed you or dearth. Dearth is the lack of something, the paucity of something. That there was some lack in your life, maybe of food or resources and that is why you died. Age killed you or agues. Agues is a disease like malaria, some sort of a disease you caught and therefore you died. Tyrannies, maybe there was a dictator who was running a very tyrannical rule and therefore ordered the killing of some of the people. Despair killed you, you were killed because you were that was ordained so by the law. Chance killed you, 
or any other factor that might have killed you. Slain to have killed. Hat is HAS has. This is the archaic usage of the word has. So he says maybe you have been slain by any of these factors. And also he includes those in this discussion who he feels are the enlightened souls. That they do not die and then meet their maker, but they can actually see God with their own eyes. So he is putting everybody in the same category. Those who are dead by various causes or those who are so enlightened that who behold God and never taste death's woe. Late, they are present on that particular day when resurrection is taking place or when God is giving his pardons to people and therefore the people who are enlightened and they see God with their naked eyes basically have not died of death. They have come close to or they have become aware of the truth of reality and therefore they have become one with God. He is including them in the list as well that they also are present on resurrection day and perhaps they will have a better fate than those who died because of many other reasons. So he is saying that these uh, categories of people are present today at the resurrection day. And now he'll start to put forth his own philosophy. This is a sonnet. So it has three parts of four lines each. And then finally, there is a couplet. So we have already discussed two parts of the four lines. And we now come to the third part, which again comprises of four lines. And he says, but let them sleep, Lord, and me mourn a space. For if above all these my sins abound, it's late to ask abundance of thy grace when we are there, here on this lowly ground. In these particular four lines, the last phrase, here on this lowly ground, actually relates to the couplet that will follow or the last two lines that will follow. Let's first look at the first three lines of this particular part of the sonnet. He says that, I understand God that you're resurrecting these uh, people who are dead or the others that are enlightened, you are forgiving them, you are pardoning them. But you know what, for the time being, let them sleep and listen to me. Because let me tell you one thing, that my sins are huge. My sins are more than what all these people would have committed. That I have not been the best of human beings. And please listen to, to my prayer here. And it brings to the notice of God, that God, don't you think it will be rather late in the day to reach this last day of resurrection and then ask for your forgiveness, ask for to be pardoned by you, ask that our sins should be forgiven by you. Don't you think it's too late? Because we're already dead and there is nothing we can do about it. So he's questioning God. It's late to ask abundance of thy grace when we are there. God has an abundance of grace. He's basically saying that God is very generous, that he has a large heart and therefore he would forgive our sins he would forgive our shortcomings. But he's also questioning, God, don't you think it's too late in the day to wait till we are dead and then wait till we are resurrected to ask for your forgiveness? I think that should come earlier. And then the last uh, phrase that I said, which relates to the couplet later, he says, here on this lowly ground, teach me how to repent. He says, don't you think it would be much better that here while I exist on this ground and he calls it lowly because he does feel that he hasn't been the best of human beings. So the pedestal that he's standing on is lowly, is not exalted. So he says that when I exist on this earth, when I exist on this ground in the here and the now, in the present, don't you think this is the time to repent? This is the time to ask for your forgiveness and then this is the time to perhaps become a better human being. Why wait till we are dead and we are resurrected? I understand this is what our mythology says, but don't you think that you should teach me how to repent here and now? Teach me how to repent for that's as good as if thou hadst sealed my pardon with thy blood. He says that this would then be to come face to face with you, God. If you teach me how to repent, if you teach me how to know myself when I have committed wrong, to accept that I have done something wrong and to repent for it, to seek forgiveness for it, well, that would be like, you have totally pardoned me, that you've totally forgiven me. And I don't think I need to wait till the day I'm dead and until the day I'm then resurrected and then I seek your pardon because if you teach me today to say sorry, if you teach me today to recognize my ills, my shortcomings and work towards removing them from my behavior, work towards becoming a better human being, then as if 
you would have signed yourself my letter of forgiveness with your blood. That would be real forgiveness. And that is why I use a very strong metaphor that you sealed my pardon with your blood. It's a letter signed in blood, a document signed in blood that I forgive this man because he has learned to recognize his own faults, to recognize his own shortcomings and overcome them in his lifetime and has not really waited till he's dead or till she's dead and then they are resurrected. So this is what John Dunn does in this particular piece. He puts forth a comparison between the philosophy of resurrection and between the act of identifying your ills on your own and therefore coming to the act of repenting and therefore being pardoned by God. He puts these two in front of us and leaves us a question but also a sort of a realization that God, I really think this would be the better way that in the here and now of today I learn how to repent rather than wait for the day of resurrection after my death. John Dunn, All the Earth's Imagined Corners. Thank you. Please follow the playlist Metaphysical Poets on our channel Pratyancha. Hit the bell icon, subscribe to the channel and if you need to say something to me, do leave a comment in the comment box. I'll see you again with another video. Thank you.